<laughs> What's up, Internet? It's your boy, Dom, here. It's a really, really, really long-awaited review slash discussion video. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I will be completely biased with this one because this has been, I think, eight years in the making, man. Eight years I've waited for this. It's just, it's been too long. I'll just say that. It's been too fucking long, but it's finally here. So, you know, don't like come in here if you haven't watched the movie because it's going to be filled with spoilers so you know if you haven't watched the movie why are you watching movie reviews on youtube go buy a ticket or watch it on peacock it's on peacock right now like i literally stayed up all night i'm not even gonna lie i stayed up so i could watch it and like fucking hopefully put this review out before anyone else i'm gonna try to speed line this process because i want it to be on rumble too so I'm going to try and keep it nice and short. But well, let's get into the nitty gritty of the movie. This movie is not one for one with the games. Just like the books. You know, it's it's like a parallel universe. You know what I mean? It's, it's their own telling of the story. So there's a lot of changes to this. So let's get into it. The story starts out with Mike Schmidt. You know, the, the story, the movie really, it doesn't tell you his last name. They make a point to not tell you because you know if you're a fan of the games you're gonna know automatically it's mike schmidt you know but this adds an interesting little twist and you know i'll tell you a little later when i get into it but basically the problem with mike is he's raising his little sister and we don't know where his um parents are all we know is his aunts trying to fight to get custody of his sister abby because um early on in the movie Mike has this episode where he sees this man, like, taking his son, and, like, this triggers PTSD Mike has, so Mike fucking tackles a guy and beats the shit out of him. So, you know, he's a security guard at the fucking, uh, at the mall this happens at, so he gets fired and he's looking for a job. And, you know, this is where we get backstory on Mike. His little brother went missing, and he can't keep a job, you know what I mean? His parents, nobody knows where his parents are. They don't tell you in the movie. They just, it just says that they're gone. That's really it. There's no like more implications than that. But we know he still dreams every single night about his brother trying to piece together who was the one that captured him, who took him away. Because the man just took him away while they were on a fucking family picnic. And he saw the man, so uh, there's this book that that's in the movie it's really cheeky sorry about the noise outside by the way um it's my neighbors so you know all the fucking yelling and all those don't 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 the construction crew outside they fucked up my road i guess because there was a bunch of assholes speeding so they put they literally filled it with a bunch of like not potholes but you know the pothole covers whatever that material is fucking made out of the entire fucking street is now filled with that. So every time a car passes by, all you hear is dun, 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 dun. They, like, this neighborhood's going to shit. Besides that, besides the noise complaints, let's get back into it. Mike's trying to piece together who the fuck took his brother. So he has this book called Dream Theory. Which, you know, if you're a FNAF fan, it's funny to you because, like, the first four games, it was thought that they were all a dream, which is Dream Theory. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, like... What really happened in the first four games didn't happen so everyone got really pissed off which caused the game creator to rewrite the story so it's funny that they nod to it in the fucking movie or maybe this is a direction he was trying to go in all along but in the movie in the movie mike is using dream theory so he can um remember every single fucking instance of that day when his brother got kidnapped so he can like piece together who was the man driving the, the car who was the man behind the slaughter anyways so uh he goes to his career counselor his career counselor is like bro you can't keep a job but you know if you're really 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 desperate there's this one job that uh that is hiring mike declines initially but then you know his aunt presses him for custody of abby you know his little sister so that's when uh mike folds under pressure takes the job he takes the job and then um you know he meets all these wacky characters. He meets all the animatronics. He meets Vanessa. But in the background of the first two days, it's shown that there's a girl babysitting Abby. But, 
you know, around the second night, I think, after Mike has all these dreams of the little kids who went missing, the fucking, uh, the babysitter is revealed to be working with the aunts of Mike to take away Abby. Like, she's just spying on him. So they concoct this plan to get him fired. They're like, oh, he's a security guard at this place. So if we break into this place, he'll get fired. So, you know, the babysitter <laughs> and her fucking friends, they all break into Freddy's. And they get killed by the animatronics. Now, uh, this causes Vanessa to come in the next day and see um, fucking Abby just chilling with the animatronics. Because at this point, they're cool with Abby. But with adults, they're very vicious and angry and they kill. But with little kids, they're cool. Vanessa scolds them. She's like, fucking Mike, why are you bringing this little girl here? Because an accident does happen, you know. Abby fucking uh, plays Bonnie's guitar and it explodes on her. So Vanessa's like, I will fucking shoot you and bring this little girl back. But, you know, some time passes. And then uh, I think like only a day really fucking passes. Where it's like the, um, the kid... Who ends up being uh, revealed to be Golden Freddy is like, oh, we want your sister. You know, we want your sister. And we know you want to bring back your brother. You don't even want to figure out who it is. You just want to live in this memory with him forever. So we can keep you here if you give us your sister. And Mike initially agrees. But then he changes his mind when he reali when he remembers his sister and realizes this is all, like, evil. This is all fake. But, you know, they're already making their moves. Golden Freddy actually moves in and kills Eon and takes fucking Abby back to Freddy's. But um, this is when the cast attacks Mike. But uh, thankfully, he's saved by Vanessa, who reveals to him that, you know, William Afton is the man behind the slaughter. He's the one who killed all the little kids. He's the one who kidnapped his brother. And he's responsible and he's the golden bunny that these uh keeps appearing all over paintings and uh in the dreams that mike has the little kids also keep drawing this golden bunny so it's like she tells him oh that man is my father you know and uh he has this way of influencing the animatronics so that they forget what happened to them and they just kill 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 and they want to turn your little sister into one of them by stuffing her into a suit so, you know, they fight the animatronics because um, zapping them with electricity really fucks them up. It's rough because William Afton does end up coming. At first, it seems like Mike has the upper hand. Like, he throws water at Bonnie and Freddy, then shocks them. Then uh, he fights off the cupcake. And uh, Vanessa shocks Foxy to save the little girl, Abby. But, like, I don't know, just fucking Afton comes in. And it's like, he's like fucking beating the shit out of Mike. Because obviously he's in a giant animatronic suit. That shit like makes you strong as fuck. So he's just fucking tossing him around with ease. He's about to kill him. But that's when Vanessa comes in and she's like, oh, dad, you better stop. You better stop. Like, you can't do this. And, you know, no surprise to any of us FNAF fans. But uh, William Afton is revealed to be the career counselor. You know, the guy who was on the phone instructing uh, Mike what to do. He was that guy, the same guy that got Mike the job. He was a killer. He was the owner of the fucking place and he was the one killing all the children. And you know, Vanessa was helping him up to this point when she met Mike and then she changes her mind. And then like, this motherfucker just straight up is like, you're gonna turn on me now? I'm like, really? Well, they haven't turned on me. So he literally gets a knife and he stabs his own fucking daughter. But uh, this is when, like, Mike has this revelation. He's like, oh, Abby, like, the paintings all over the fucking, uh, the place, they all show this bunny in a good light. But if you can, like, draw what really happened, then uh, the brainwashing will break, I guess. And the kids will remember what really happened. So, you know, Abby starts tearing down paintings and she paints this photo of uh, William Afton killing all the kids. She hangs it up. And, you know, that's when... Uh, that's when he dies because, you know, the animatronics. Well, one of the animatronics, just a cupcake attacks him and that causes a spring suit to fucking lock and crush him from the inside. And, you know, he dies. Vanessa's taken to the hospital. And, you know, since her aunt is dead, Mike keeps full custody of Abby and she's doing well. The final scene, really, is Golden Freddy looking at fucking Afton. Like, 
just like who's like shaking and dying and he reaches out his hand and golden freddy just closes his door on him you know so obviously it's left open for a sequel because this is an entire franchise but the lore implications on this one are really really fucking crazy compared to the series like i said it's not one for one so let me tell you the lore implications here lore implications here are one that mike schmidt is not related to william afton at all you know everybody who plays the games we all thought mike schmidt was his son you know michael afton's son but then again we have to remember that in this series they tend to repeat names a lot so it could be possible that there's two different mics you know what i mean the one that we hear at the end of uh sister location and i think three he might be different than the one from one you know what i mean but again they're not one for one so in in this iteration of five nights at freddy's mike and william they're not related at all vanessa appears earlier and sh she's not baby the baby suit actually is in this movie but it's not active which means maybe they're gonna kill vanessa later but you know they were trying to stuff abby into that suit what's that to say about elizabeth she probably doesn't exist or they just merged the characters but you know the michael character and the elizabeth character haven't really been shown because in the fucking in the games there's three afton kids in this movie there's just one so you know she hasn't turned into baby yet so it's like i don't know i i don't know what the fuck the implications really are it's weird because like where's a crying child according to this first movie there is no crying child there is no mic it's all just vanny which it's confusing as fuck because in the newer games there's vanny so it's like how's that all gonna fit together who knows william afton was phone guy this entire time which, you know, a lot of people were theorizing that, that Afton was phone guy, but nobody ever, like, nobody ever was bold enough to say, this is truth, you know what I mean? Because there was no solid proof. But, you know, in this iteration of the movie, in the movie's un universe and canon, phone guy and William Afton are one and the same. So it's, it's just crazy. I'm not going to say uh, we know the lore now of FNAF, because, again, this is just a take on FNAF. This is not one for one fucking at all. Like, I, like I've just pointed out, this is not one for one at all. There's characters that I wouldn't say don't necessarily belong here, but just they break the canon of the games. So, you know, take it as you will. I personally loved it. You know, what would I give it on a scale from one to 10? I'd give it a solid eight out of 10 for the eight years that I waited. Plus, you know, I think this is what a movie should be, especially if you're adapting from a video game. Respect the fan base. Like, there's two solid cameos in the movie that, like, I'm just really happy about. I'm glad to see. These were FNAF YouTubers I actually grew up watching. So I'm, like, really happy. They actually got recognized and were put in the movie. I'm not going to say names because I'm not going to spoil it for you. If you want to know who I'm talking about, just go watch the fucking movie. I feel like this is definitely, definitely, definitely how a movie should be. You go to the fans. It's not just fan service in this fucking movie. It's like, they just, they, they respect the lore. They, they respect us as a fan base. You know what I mean? They, they don't just see us as brainless brainwashed idiots who are just gonna fucking flood the movie theaters like no i know a fan song actually makes it onto the fucking movie at the end in the credits the fnaf song actually makes it in the end but you hear songs from the game scattered throughout it's, it's just nice you know what i mean it's very nice that they got the fans involved i feel like that's what every movie should be you know what i mean i'm not saying oh bring the fans in all the time that, that would make a shitty product what i'm saying is Fucking don't treat us like mindless idiots. You know what I mean? Don't don't treat us like just numbers that are gonna rush to your movie theaters and like throw money at you. Like this movie really respected the lore, and I like that. So I highly recommend you go watch it. Do me a huge favor though. Like this is a huge favor. Like you don't have to comment, but subscribe. And if you can, please share this video. Share this video around. I don't usually ask for that, but my goal, my dream, really, is to make some money off this YouTube shit. Because I want to save enough money to buy that Chica animatronic one day. You know, the actual on-set Jim Henson Chica animatronic. 
I want it. I want. I want it. I need it to be mine, bro. Like you know what I mean. You you hear of these tales of these millionaires who buy these like these super expensive uh, set pieces off auctions from like movies. Like you know people who have like real life stormtrooper suits and shit. Like I want the real life chica animatronic. That'd be pretty fucking nice. So share this video in one day. Maybe one day we'll make that happen. You and me together, bro. But yeah, I uh, highly recommend you go watch it. Until next time, I've been your Dom. Later.